So I'm sure you've seen a few anesthesia challenges by now, and that's where I give propofol to patients that are gonna be undergoing sedation. I ask them to count and see how long it takes them to fall asleep. As a result of one of those challenges, someone asked, why did you only give half of the syringe of propofol, and what did you end up doing with the rest? The dosage I'm giving is, is based off of many factors, but in this scenario, it's mainly just what am I trying to accomplish with the anesthesia? And with the sedation, what I want them to do is I want them to go to sleep for the procedure, but I also want them to remain breathing. And I want them to remain breathing on their own throughout the procedure. So right here, I have a 20 milliliter vial of propofol. And what I'll do is I'll pull that up into a 20 milliliter syringe. Typically for these sedation cases, I'll give 10 milliliters, which equals 100 milligrams of propofol. That's gonna get someone to go off to sleep fairly rapidly, but also remain breathing on their own. With a general anesthesia, what I'm doing is I want to induce a deep form of anesthesia and also want to induce apnea. I want them to stop breathing because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a breathing tube in the patient and then we're gonna hook them up to the anesthesia machine and either breathe for them or assist them in their breathing. So I want to give the entire vial, 20 milliliters of propofol, that's gonna induce apnea. The thing you have to know about propofol is it has a very rapid onset of action. As you've seen in the videos, it can get someone to sleep in anywhere from five seconds to 30 seconds. The other thing about it is it also has a very short duration of action or a short half-life. Meaning if that one dose that I give, if I don't give anything else, the patient is going to wake up in, in just a few minutes. So with that sedation case where I only gave half of it, the remaining amount, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to give small boluses. I'm going to keep giving one or two milliliters at a time to keep the patient asleep throughout the procedure. Or I'm going to hook them up to a propofol syringe pump and I'm going to be given a continual infusion to keep them asleep. So uh, good question. And uh, that's just a little bit more about the propofol.